Yes, please. I thank you, Mr. Moderator, and good afternoon, colleagues. First of all, I should thank Ministry of Internet, Interna uh, Internal Affairs and Communications Japan, and also thank to my colleagues from telecommunication, develop, uh, telecommunication standardization sector, who took the most of tasks for organizing this uh, symposium and allowed me to, to make, uh, to implement rather simple task simply to deliver this presentation. Uh, I am a representative of frequently forgotten part of ICT, radio communications. And listening all presentations this morning, before starting my presentation, it seems to me that I should indicate that we underestimate of negative effect of ICTs. Because uh, if you go back and went through all diagrams, you will not find in diagrams uh, radio communications at all. And I uh, really thank uh, Mr. Uh, Yamakawa, who mentioned that according to Japan, statistic in Japan, only broadcasting produces about 30% of, consumes uh, about 30% of uh, uh, additional energy comparing with the rest of ICTs. The reason is very simple. When we speak about ICT, many people think about only computers and wired telecommunications. And we still have more TV sets in the world, much more than computers, and we still have very powerful transmitters up to two megawatts operating uh, 24 hours a day, and we have hundreds of thousand transmitters, and I think those figures should be uh, re-estimated, and I do not believe that ICT produce only 2.5% of greenhouse gases. Because radio communications, uh, in accordance even with statistics, according to statistics from Japan, uh, is uh, broadcasting is bigger than any element of, of all diagrams provided today. Now I will start my presentation, and the previous speakers um, made my life easier. They were talking about many things concerning remote sensing and uh, remote sensing applications for environment monitoring. I will try to give to you some indication not how it works, but what is the result? If uh, we consider uh, Earth's system as five elements, uh, hydrosphere, atmosphere, lithosphere, biosphere, and cryosphere, we may try uh, to see what could be done in monitoring of parameters of those Earth system elements by remote sensing. Most of people, uh, when they think or speak about radio frequencies, they speak uh, about use of radio frequencies for radio communications. However, radio emissions are also used for obtaining information about the environment because they have information about the environment which they have been in contact with. And in the radio frequency spectrum, number of frequencies are better suited due to physical phenomena for extracting the environmental information. And that's good and bad at the same time, because we do not have free choice of frequency for remote sensing. And what is remote sensing? It's radio devices. Those who want to learn more may read next slide how remote sensors are defined in the radio regulations. And I should say that radio regulations is an international treaty. It means that it's some kind of government obligations. I want to draw your attention uh, to definition uh, of passive centers. And those sensors are measuring instruments in the Earth Exploration Satellite Service 
or in the space research service by means of which information is obtained by reception of radio waves of a re natural origin. Means that everything emits, but emits using certain frequencies. And we need very sensitive sensors to measure those emissions and to measure, for example, gases and other elements. I should say that radio communication community recognized the importance of remote sensing long, long time ago. Radio communication systems and applications employing remote sensors are the main source of information for climate monitoring. In simple words, I may say that without remote sensing, there is no global climate monitoring at all. And I also should indicate that Japan and especially uh, JAXA and government and uh, other agencies are doing a lot not only to promote Kyoto Protocol, but also to implement Kyoto Protocol. And one of the uh, main steps in this direction will be this year launch of first greenhouse gases observing satellite by JAXA, which is called GOSAT. That satellite will be able to provide, uh, to provide a global systematic observation of the terrestrial carbon budget. It will be the first satellite. Then I will give to you several samples what is being done to measure parameters of elements of Earth and some samples how it's done or precision of uh, measurements. If you speak about atmosphere, remote sensing is used for measuring of atmosphere composition, ozone, greenhouse gases, etc. Uh, it was mentioned already by the previous speakers. Also radiation level UV emissions, cloud heights and extent, wind speed and directions, and etc. And on this slide, you see a picture of uh, mid-tropospheric CO2, which was uh, uh, obtained uh, in 2003. And here you have uh, indication of precision at the bottom. Sorry, mouse is not very operational. And so is NASA. Next is a measurement done uh, by remote sensing from space for uh, methane, the second most important negative greenhouse gas after carbon dioxide. And again, you, you see scale uh, over every continent. However, I should indicate there is a lot to be done in this direction because uh, uh, we cannot provide good measurements of ocean through so reflection. Hydrosphere, uh, hydrosphere. Remote sensing is used for ocean measuring ocean topography, mapping of ocean circulation, sea surface temperature, ocean wave structure, ocean pollution, sea level rise, etc. One interesting sample from satellite. Today, we could measure change in sea level with precision two, three centimeters. It's really what is necessary when uh, there are some events like negative events or uh, disasters like tsunamis, etc. One of the most important factors which influences uh, strong storm and hurricane is temperature, ocean temperature. And today, again, from space, we could measure ocean temperature with precision 0 0.2 degrees Celsius. And this is a one sample uh, of Mediterranean Sea temperature map from Invisat. It's uh, from ESA. European Space Agency. I try to indicate the source of information on every slide and to show that all space agencies are now involved. And when one of the previous speakers was saying that 
there were many meteorological satellites and there are only 17. I should also indicate, because I was involved in space business for a long, long time, almost 40 years, 17 satellites, it's not many. Big commercial operators have more than 17 satellites today. I want to say that sometimes we are reluctant to give uh, orbital position or uh, spectrum for those studies, saying that uh, we do not have enough for uh, commercial use. But still, there are really few satellites for Earth exploration com uh, comparing with commercial satellites. Then biosphere. One of the uh, important factors is uh, vegetation factors, vegetation mapping, biomass measurements, crop cover and status, forest cover and status, land use mapping, and soil moisture. And that also done from satellites. And this is interesting sample concerning cryosphere. It's the source is JAXA, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. And on this slide, you see the changes in uh, Arctic sea ice in 2005 and 2007. And you see, uh, unfortunately, mouse is not Yeah. If you see this red line on the second slide, you see the changes between those years. Amount of ice is decreasing. It means that warming is going up. And this is also about ice. It's measurement uh, between uh, 86, 1986 and 2000. And on the left, on, for you it's left, yeah, on the left you see amount of ice in 86 and on the right in 2002. And this is animation showing how it was changing in years. And also, talking about lithosphere, again, remote sensing is used for overall shape of Earth, measurement of overall shape of Earth, regional variation of gravity, land displacement from earthquakes. And at the bottom, you see such a measurement done for uh, surface deformation after Akutan, Island, Alaska in 90, uh, 1996 seismic swarm. It's done by uh, INSAR system. And uh, scale indicated be below, it's up to 12 centimeters change. Frequency bands for remote sensing. As I mentioned before, we cannot select any frequency band. However, I should also indicate that when we use frequency below 100 megahertz, we could uh, make measurements look clouds. And that is extremely important for uh, permanent measurement on global basis. And this is indication which frequency could be used for oxygen measure measurement. And it's clear from these pictures that frequency bands from 75 to 100 gigahertz from, uh, cannot be used for measurement of the oxygen level in atmosphere. It means that we have no choice. We have to use certain frequencies. That's the reason why scientists insist on certain frequency bands. And uh, precision and frequency bands allowed for measurements. To measure uh, with one meter resolution, we need about 300 megahertz. If you want to improve precision, we need wider bands. Uh, on this slide, uh, you may find uh, radio communication services involved in climate monitoring. Uh, in reality, uh, several were mentioned already. It's meteorological and earth exploration. But we also used fixed satellite service, broadcasting satellite service, and we also used wired telecommunication facilities for data dissemination. And we need a uh, very high speed because amount of data retrieved and being exchanged is very, very high. And finally, I should say that uh, world radio communication conferences pay more and more attention to this 
uh, to questions related to remote sensing. For example, the last conference was the biggest event in the ITU history, general for ITU, because there were more than 2,800 participants. And at once, uh, we had all together more than 3,000 participants uh, in this conference. And that conference allocated additional frequency bands for uh, climate monitoring. And it was not easy, because some people are saying that in certain frequency band, one megahertz is equal to one gigabox. And you understand that for commercial users and for some governments, it was not easy to give up frequency bands for a scientific purpose, like many things, but those purposes are not really scientific. They are used for everyday life. And the same radio communication assembly, which is involved in uh, standardization in radio matters, also approved several resolutions. Uh, my conclusion was I, that uh, you may understand after all this presentation that remote sensing is a very essential tool for climate monitoring. And as the steward of the global framework for spectrum, ITU provides necessary radio frequency spectrum and orbit resources for satellite, for climate monitoring and remote sensing, as well as promoting their use for interest of all countries. And here you may find some web resources. Uh, you may look them and may find more information. And thank you very much. I finished my presentation. Thank you very much.